Hello, and welcome back to another episode of World of Color. Oh man, we've been doing so much. That last episode was crazy. We went on such an adventure. And you know what, y'all? I am getting a little overwhelmed. Have you ever started a modded world and you just get jumping in there? And you think, holy cow, there's so much we could do between building and getting the villagers up behind us and adventuring and getting all the trees and this and that. Well, you know what? I've fallen into that. I've gotten so overwhelmed that I don't know what to do next. So what I thought we would do is slow the world down a lot and kind of realize that, yeah, I'm a beginner. I don't know much about mod modded. I don't know what everything means in here. I don't know how all the different pieces work. So we're going to slow it down a little. We're going to try and build, I don't know, like a tree farm in one episode and then maybe work on the villagers and then I don't know, figure out what all these different benches do. I know I've used them a little bit, but I want to see. Oh, chairs kill iron golems. That's interesting. <laughs> but distraction aside, I want to make sure I understand all the different mods that are in here, really kind of go through them. So it might be a lot of learning. So for those of you who are new, new to modded, you're right in the right spot. We can learn together. For those of you who are maybe the experts, let me know down in the comments what I could do better, what I could learn, and kind of what mods interact with what mods so that I can be maybe a little bit smarter in my progression as we go through. And this iron golem's really fascinating me that the chair is going to be the death of him. I don't know why villagers get stuck there too. But, you know, we'll always take some free iron. That's great. So great. So that's what we're going to do with this series is we're going to slow it down a little, tackle smaller projects, or maybe do one adventure or two. And, you know, just kind of play modded and make sure that we enjoy it, not get overwhelmed. And I love these buildings. I want to make sure that we have more of these, but some of it's going to be us learning before we can get this whole area bit up, build out. So for today's project, where I'm getting inspired is we have so many colors of trees that we've brought back. I think there's some that we haven't even planted yet. And we're going to need all these colors as we keep building out this area. So I think today what we're going to do, and you probably already know in the thumbnail because I'm probably going to take a picture of whatever we do. But with all these different trees, I would love to see how big do they grow? What shapes do they grow and how do we farm them? Some of them are going to be a little easier because as you can see, it looks like even the, what was this, a two wide or is that a one wide? I don't know. We're going to have to do some experimentation, but like this one only comes out so far. These ones are huge. It looks like when I planted these purple ones and those blue ones, they're pretty straightforward and up tall. Even these dead ones. Look like they just grow like the traditional oak ones do. And then what did we have back here? A fir? Yep, a fir one. Those look like they grow a little bit wider than a normal spruce. Well, maybe a lot wider. What is that? Like six blocks out? We got this wood. Man, I don't even remember what they're all called. Ubran? Ubran? I don't know. You guys will notice my pronunciation on some of these is going to be way off. But that looks like it grows fairly straight up and like a spruce. But what we're going to do is clear out an area and I'll probably create like a little test area so we can plant some, see how big they are, how much space they'll need. And I think we're going to use, at least for now, leave our city there. And I think there's plenty of land if we run through here. If we can clear this out a little, I don't want to make it completely flat, but at least flat enough that... What is that? Hmm. Just me getting distracted again. Always happens. Looks like some kind of a blue jay or something. But I think there's enough land that's going to be back here, kind of out of the way from our city, but close enough that the saplings will grow. So I'm going to work on clearing this out for a minute so we can start getting some of these trees in here and having a place that we can have a tree. I was going to say tree factory, an orchard, a tree harvesting area. Or maybe we'll just call it a tree farm. Either way, I'm going to get digging and let's get some of this flattened out. Okay, and a little bit of time later, you can see I'm starting to work out some details here. We flattened out a decent portion. There's still a bunch up here that we're going to do over time. 
But what I'm trying to look for is not making this perfect. Like I don't want to have a perfectly flat area. I'm okay if there's some straight lines because obviously as a city grows, they're going to optimize for the farms. So that's what we're doing. We're going to create a little bit here, but what I want to show you is kind of my thinking so far. So if you haven't seen any of my series before, I love to think in dirt. It's easy to get rid of. It's so much better than just putting like the whole thing in there. So what my idea is, is that we'll have some kind of nice little arch here, probably some kind of fence that runs along the perimeter just to keep us safe. I don't really want bad guys getting in here while we're harvesting. And then maybe some kind of cute little building out here. This will give us kind of a place to store all of our extra wood, our saplings, anything that comes out of this place. I want to have a nice little building. Plus, I think if it's going to be this close to the city, we should really tell a story that maybe you have to come out of the city into, I don't know, an industrial. No, industrial seems a little too strong. Maybe just a fun area where it's not the city. It's got normal houses, maybe the suburbs. Maybe that's what I'm going for. But great. So now that we kind of have what we're going to do, the thing I'm looking at now is the size of some of these trees. So it looks like these purple ones grow kind of short. They don't get real big. These blue ones looks like they get a little bit taller. These guys just grow however they want. So there may be trouble. Those are obviously huge. They're two by twos. There might be a single stem version. We'll have to look at those. And then these look like they're the small oak trees as well. So now what I'm really going to think about, and this is what I do with a lot of my builds, is I don't want to just cram things in there, but think about if we're coming out of the city here, what would our sight lines be? Because if we stick all those big trees right here in the front, that's all we're going to see is massive trees. But what I'd love to see is maybe some layering. So maybe the purple, maybe those dead ones, and then these blue ones, something here on the edge, maybe even some of these pink and purple ones. Now, I don't know what the pink ones do because some of them are that and some of them are that. So maybe it's like how oak grow. I don't know. We'll have to experiment with that one. If it is, we might put a little bar above these just to maintain the height so they're easier to chop down. But that is at least the thinking that I do whenever I build something is what is the site like going to be? Are we going to get something that's just a big wall of blue or are we going to get some different colors? So I think that's what we're going to do next is we're going to start planting these first rows of trees. Looks like they're not very wide. They're pretty standard farming. So I think we're going to stick those here in the front. So I might have to put a little more dirt in or maybe I'll just plant like two or three to get us started. So I'm going to jump in to chopping these down. We'll figure out where they're going to go and if we should put a little protector so they don't get massive so let's do that all right i didn't know i was gonna record this but we're just over here chopping down some of these trees and look at this a rainbow bee i don't know if that does anything different but i think that's pretty cool a rainbow bee if that's something special let me know down in the comments i think we're eventually gonna try and capture this guy like i might bring I don't know if I have, do I have silk touch? Nope, don't have silk touch yet, but I think we got to get that. Try and get that rainbow bee. Let me know down in the comments if that's something special. Again, I don't know, but I had to show you that because that was pretty cool as I was chopping down these trees. Okay, and I had to get myself a new pickaxe because we're going through them too fast. We got to get an enchantment set up somewhere around here. I don't even know if I've found... Maybe I found one spawner out in a boat, but we need some way of repairing it. But either way, one thing I'm learning about should we do two wide or should we do single wide is if I come up here, you'll see when I try and do this, it says the tree is too big and can't be broken. It can only be so big if you want kind of that instant mine is what I'm learning. So like some of these taller trees are going to be harder. So I started pillaring up this one so I could cut it down. So I think that's going to help us make the decision that we might not want to do these double wide. We might just do a lot of single wide. It'll make it easier to instant mine rather than having to do this every time. I don't want to go back. Oh, and I guess I found out where my peak is. So maybe it's not too bad, but I think for right now, 
we're gonna stick with the one wide trees and then maybe if we need to really get a lot of a type of wood then maybe we'll explore the two type but i think it's gonna be easy enough with the instant mine just go through hit all the bases so we're gonna just keep getting more of these in i'm gonna get these ones i just cut down in you can see some of them are starting to grow so let me get those in and then i'll show you where we're at and a long while later we have a bunch of the trees in here you can see how they're growing now it's interesting i've started putting kind of a chest in front of each of them so we can keep the logs went over there started gathering all of our stuff oh and that one just grew so i'm using this a little bit as a test right now as you can see i thought these would grow up higher these ones shorter the cool thing with trees is now that we know that there's this weird height difference, we can actually move them into the front, which I'll probably do before we wrap up. But we'll probably put those in front of those and see where how we're getting the different heights. That's great. Now, some of them, I'm okay if they're hiding between two different ones because this is kind of ugly. It's a dead tree. That's okay. It's also interesting to see like these firs, I believe they're firs, yep have to have so much space between them before they'll grow so as you see these saplings won't grow because they need more space so that's something good for us to know and then it's interesting this one grew first it's only like three blocks high almost no leaves but luckily the other ones came through for us there's our redwoods as you can see we're getting some of these other ones mahogany i believe is this yep is what that's called we've got some that have kind of some of the um common woods like birch but i love their leaves so we'll grow them for that and then obviously kind of the palm trees and then did you know that you can make half slabs out of dirt that's pretty cool i was hoping that the grass would spread to them looks like they don't so when we get silk touch we'll get some of the grass ones and replace all these so that it looks a little nicer but this is roughly the tree sapling types that we have now now the one thing you'll notice is I don't have all of the normal ones. We don't have spruce, we don't have dark oak, other than this gives us dark oak. But we're gonna have to do some of that because we're gonna need some of the regular trees as well. And as you can see, I guess I should come back here and show you, we are running out of space. I thought this was oodles of space, but we're even running into the river back here. So we may have to figure out a little bit more of a plan of how we're gonna do this. But right now, it's going to get us most of the woods that we want, most of the colors. We can let them grow. And like I say, the nice thing about trees is if we find ourselves not using one of these trees, we just rip it out and plant new saplings and we got it going. All right. So the next thing is I want to start building kind of this gateway, a cool little fence. And what I found is that there are, oh, great, rain. That's okay, there are lots of different fences that we can use, and these are just from the magic, the blue trees. These are pretty cool. There's a lot of different variances that we can do, and I'm even thinking if I have some stone or something up the side, maybe a decorative stone, then that might be a pretty cool fence. And so what I'm going to do is see which color of fence do I want to go through there. Or do we stick with just one color? Maybe we make it rainbow themed, make it look a little bit fun. Make it look like, I don't know, we're incorporating all the different woods. That might be where we go, and I think that's where I'm going to start. So I'm going to start building out an archway here. We're going to build, I think we're going to go like five wide, and just build a tiny little fence around there. Maybe we'll run it down the length there, and that way we can see if we're going to like it. So that's what's next on the docket. Let's jump in. And some decorating time later, we have a gate. We have a fence that goes from, what, yellow to blue. Not all the colors, but maybe that's what will wrap around the side. We'll have to figure that out. And I swapped our purple trees and our pink trees to give us a little bit better depth there. And then, obviously, some of the other ones have grown. And let me come down the scaffolding here real quick. I had too much fun, y'all. I brought over our mason table. Got all these different blocks, and then realized that we can make roofs. Now, it looks like a heart. Maybe that's okay. Maybe it's, I don't know, just something that broke. Who knows? And also learned that you can do these stone brick railing gates. They work just like regular gates, but they're made out of stone. 
which I think is pretty cool. Kind of a fun way. I don't know that it matches the style here, so we'll probably swap that out at some point. But we we're just having fun learning what some of these tables do. And that's what we got. So inside of here, now we're going to have to decorate a little bit more. I think it's maybe a little too boring. But that's going to be as we explore like different options. Like are there other fences? What are the best light sources? There's some things that will help us enrich it. But for now, we're just really here to have the trees and to make it look fairly good. And I think we accomplished that here. So now we've got all of our trees growing. We can put more in here as we find more trees, which I hope there's more. I think there's a bunch of azalea trees that we haven't found just yet. But y'all, that is going to do it for this episode. I said we were going to take it slow. I hope this isn't too slow, but we learned a lot. We got those fences. We got the gates and a whole bunch of new bricks figured out. And the best part, we have all of our trees in one spot. We can come over here, get all the colors we need. And I love that these trees have so many different colors, especially those blue ones. You're going to get the blue from the leaves, the blue from the wood, and the gray from the trunk with a lot of cool textures too. So I think this is really going to be a great start for us to kind of take these episodes a little bit slower and kind of learn them real well as we go instead of just plowing through trying to get builds. Now, that being said, we're going to still keep getting builds done. But down in the comments, let me know what should we take on next? Should it be storage? Should it be some kind of building? Another farm? I don't know. But until then, we'll keep um, going and we'll talk to you soon.